Hello everyone, today we're going to look at TA Lib or Technical Analysis Library, um, which is a very common library for doing technical analysis and uh, is available on CloudQuant. Documentation is available under our documentation tab under APIs TA Lib. And this initial page here uh, goes into quite some detail as to how to use it. But what I'd like to do today is go through a very simple script, step by step and line by line, so we can see exactly how it works and what you get back. So, um, we have a script here called talib.demo, which you'll find under the public scripts. And line by line, we've got, um, we are going to import talib and we're also going to import numpy, um, because talib returns a numpy array, so we'll import numpy. And for our is symbol qualified, um, we could just do a single symbol, but what we're going to do is this, uh, one that we've used before, the S&P 500 list. Um, and we're going to return true for either symbol called spy or a symbol that is in that S&P 500 list. So uh, we only have, that, have one other callback that we use today, and that's the on start. We're just going to print out some data looking back a few days. So we're not interested in today's data. This is just to get a, a, an idea of how it works. So first of all, we're going to print symbol. And then we're going to need some historic data. So we're going to get some daily bars, uh, md.bar.daily. We're going to go back 30 bars and we're going to include empty false. So don't include any empty bars so we can get an idea if it's a, if it's, if it's not got enough bars for us to use, then we can very easily check that with the length of the uh, array that we get back. So most TLib calls use OHLC, open, high, low, close. So, um, we're going to pull those out of the daily bars and put them in their own little array. So open is daily bars dot open, and then high dot high, low dot low, close dot close, and so on. And we're going to do some tier lib calls next. And as I said, they're put into NumPy arrays. And what you get back can vary. It can be um, if you're asking for a moving average, it will obviously give you a float back. And if you're asking for a signal, it tends to return that back as zero is no signal and a hundred is a signal. And if the signal can be directional in some way, then you'll get a, a positive 100 or a negative 100. If you're asking for something like a moving average where you have to give it a series of data before it can even start calculating. So if you did a moving av average over 10 days, you would have to give it at least 10 days of data for it to be able to calculate that. So for the first nine entries, you would simply get a NAN back. And we will see that in the data that we get back. So I'm going to go through a few of these. Talib.cdl engulfing. Engulfing is when a bar is bigger than the previous bar and completely contains it in the candle, not the wicks, just the candle. So that, that's the first one we're going to look at. We call Talib, we give it the open high, low close. We then use NumPy to list to convert that NumPy array into a standard list. So we just give it the end goal that we've just created. And then we could print both of them out, but I, I, I commented out that line and we're just going to print out the list version just because it's a little easier to read. And then we do a little check that if the most recent entry in the list is uh, 100, then we say yesterday engulfed the previous day bullish, the green bar. And if it's minus one, then we say yesterday engulfed the previous day bearish, a red bar. Uh, the next one we're going to do is uh, relative strength. So again, talib.rsi. This time it only needs the close, and we need to tell it over what period we wanted to look at to calculate the relative strength. Again, um, we're going to convert it to a list, and then we're going to print out the last 10 entries in the list, just because it, that we're actually, when we create our bars, we've asked for 30 bars, and we'll end up with a lot, just a string of nuns at the front. Um, so I wanted to remove at least some of those. Uh, the next one is CDL3 outside. So this is looking for a stock where you've got a trend in a particular direction that the first of the three bars, the oldest of the three bars, is going in the same direction as the trend, but then the next bar consumes it in the same way as engulfing and has the opposite direction. And then the next bar after that continues the opposite direction and the close is greater than that, uh, greater than that previous bar. And um, we'll look at a couple of examples. So again, we're just going to call that three out, giving it open, high, low, close again, converting it to a list, and then we're printing it, and we're looking to see if the last entry in the list is 100. And then we're saying, yes, we had a three outside yesterday, and symbol name. 
tlib.adx. So this is a direction indicator, a uh, strength of a move in a particular direction. And again, you're going to give it high, low, close, and not all four of them, and a time period. And then we're also going to calculate the minus direction and the plus direction, because ADX just gives you a strength. It gives you a number from 0 to 100, but it doesn't indicate in what direction the, the movement is. Uh, whichever is the greater of these two is an indication of the direction of the move. So again, convert them to lists, print them out, um, we'll print the last 10 entries for the list, and then for these minus and plus, we'll just print out the last three. We're only really interested in the most recent one. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the most recent entry in the direction and see if it's greater than 50. We're also going to check the one before that and see if it's less than 50. In other words, we've crossed the 50 threshold. It's not been over 50 for a while. This is a new crossing of the 50 threshold. Um, uh, no particular reason why I've chosen that value. And the plus direction is greater than the minus direction, uh, which would indicate we've got a, a positive movement. And then again, we're going to do the same thing again. So we're looking at this same movement across with the, with the, uh, the direction movement. And then, but then we're checking to see if the plus direction is less than the minus direction. In other words, the minus direction is stronger, in which case we would go short. The next one we're going to do is moving average. Now, moving average is an interesting one in that you can pass an extra value called MA type and request a particular type of moving average. Now, most people are going to be using one of these first two, but these others are available if you wish to use them. So again, simple moving average. Uh, we don't pass it anything. The default is zero. And we're going to give it 20 bars. And we're going to convert it to a list. And we're going to print out the list. And then we're going to do an exponential moving average where the most recent entries in the list have more weight than the older entries in the list. So it, gives, it moves more rapidly, changes direction more rapidly. I tend to find that more useful myself. So this time we do have to pass any type and we pass it as equal to one to get an exponential moving average and print that list. And then we're going to print the last three entries in each list. And then we're going to do a very simple calculation of the average of the last 20 close prices, which providing we do have 20 close prices should be the same as our simple moving average. That's the sum of the close price for the last 20 bars divided by the length of the close bars for the last 20 bars. So if we only got 18 back, that would get the sum of the 18 divided by 18. And then just the last three close prices to compare that with. And then because, as you know, we uh, when we work with this system, is symbol qualified, we'll spin up a script for every one of these that's true. So we'll get about 500 symbols spun up. And then it will pass through on start once for each symbol. And at the end of on start, we're just going to terminate so we don't use any more of the system because we're not going on to trade or do anything else so we can terminate it and that's basically it so if we do a new test and we do um well, we don't want to do a long period of time like that let's just uh, let's get the most recent day we're running this in december of 2017. oh uh, well i haven't refreshed my page so let's refresh my page reload that will get us the latest uh, data from the server and Again, we will go to TA lib demo, new test. And this time, when we skip through to December, November, December, we have the 13th. And we can just copy that and paste it into there. And it doesn't matter about anything else. Um, we don't have to do any extended time period or anything. So uh, we can give this a name. We'll just call this TA lib test. And we will submit that. Jump over to the results tab. There's TLib test. We'll click on that. We don't need a scorecard for this one, so we can collapse that right now. We'll click on this one day that we have. And once it starts running, we should start seeing some data come through into the console. And there we go. We're at 76% and 100%. And we have data. Symbol A. This is the engulf list. It has no 100s in there, so there were no bars engulfing the previous bars. The RSI list for the last 10 entries, so we can see what the relative strength was for the last 10 entries. So it dropped a little and then came back up a little. Three outside, we have no entries there. ADX uh, for the last 10 entries, we have some direction there, but not very strong. So we wouldn't really be interested in that or the minus DI or the plus DI. A simple moving average. 
again scrolling to the end you can see these moving averages here and the most recent is 68 and the exponential is 67 um, and then the last three entries see if it's having to scroll to the end if you didn't want to and then an average of the last 20 close prices is 68.14 68.14 so our our manual calculation is the same as we're getting back from ta lib and and then i just printed out the last three close prices in case we wanted to look at those to see how the movement was going we've gone from 37 to flat to five cents above um, so let's have a look through these and see if we can find some that have a recent well we've got a recent engulf there on aal uh 100 so if i put in aal and i minimize this we can see that uh, we ran this on the 13th and it wasn't the most recent day that had a golf engulf it was the day before so this date engulfed the previous bar so that's correct so now if we go back to our script we can look through these and we've also got a three outside but it's right in the middle so let's not look at that one if you recall i also printed out yesterday so let's look for yesterday there we go uh, so yesterday three outside aig had a three outside yesterday so there it is it also had one before that there's a negative three outside so let's have a look at aig minimize this and so this is the 13th this is the three outside so we have a downward pattern then an engulf and then the next bar is green so the engulf is not only engulfing the bar but it's also in the opposite direction and then the next bar after that continues that movement so the close price ends up higher than the previous close price and it said that there was one in the opposite direction as well so this was an upward movement with a small green bar engulfed by a red bar where the close price on the next day was lower so there you, you've got two examples of um, that particular signal so let's go back again let's look for something else on yesterday three outside three outside and we've got an engulfed previous day bullish green bar so this is are and let's take a look at that so again we ran it on the 13th this is the previous one so we've got a very small red bar engulfed by a green bar the next day so that confirms that so i also put in the long and the short so um, let's just look for a short and there we go now i, I did modify the code slightly um, because i hadn't tested it on this particular date and there were no symbols in the s p 500 that had crossed over that 50 point threshold so i simply made it if it's over 50 if it's over 50 and the minus is greater than the plus or and vice versa so here we have kmx where we're saying go short it's over 50 on both uh, today and the previous day so we've got a direction and it's strong on the minus so let's have a look at the chart and on the 13th the previous days looking back over we do have a, a strong negative movement uh, let's try another symbol let's see if there's any longs and we have a long of cores so k or rs and again we'll have a look at that symbol and again 13th and looking backwards we do have a strong movement and it's in the positive direction so we can see that that one works as well and so we've got exponential moving average um, and and those speak for themselves um, but hopefully that's been a, a good introduction for you to the ta lib library and uh, if you have any questions by all means fire them in in the community up here click on community and jump in there and fire in any questions if you if there's anything that you don't understand and we'll be happy to help have a nice day